Hi everyone and welcome to Trauma Sensitive Instruction and Social Emotional Learning Updates. My name is Laura Clark. I'm one of the special education consultants at NKCES and I am so happy to be sharing with you today. We are going to dive into a whole host of resources. We're going to be looking at some updated language um, to what we used to call trauma-informed care, and that language is still being used, but we're really focusing on that trauma-sensitive lens. So we'll look at some strategies and supports that you can use to support students during a pandemic and beyond. We're going to discuss strategies to support students with disabilities and students in RTI. And during our synchronous learning experience, we had time for sharing from participants and recommendations for face-to-face -face and remote learning. And I've incorporated those ideas into this asynchronous recorded version. So you get the benefits of all the learning. So as I mentioned, we have updated our language from being just trauma informed to being trauma sensitive. And we've moved from saying to students, what's wrong with you? You know, why are you doing that? That deficit model to focus on the strength based model. What's happened to you? You know, tell me about what happened. Uh, explain to me where you are right now. And our focus is on what's strong with you. Yeah, it sounds like you've had quite an experience. It looks like you're coping, right? The focus on the strengths, on what that student um, is able to tell you about what's working for them, what coping strategies they have. I'm def definitely moving away from what's wrong with you to what's strong with you. Alrighty, another great recommendation that um, is being shared throughout the literature that focuses on social emotional learning is to focus first on building relationships with students, making sure, you know, we mo know more than just their name and their face, but that we know about them, about their lives, about their families' lives, you know, about where they are and how we can provide supports. So this is a great relationship building tool, and I'll just kind of walk you through what I've done here. So I love all the free photo sites that are out there. So I've pulled images from Pixabay, from Pexels, from Unsplash, and I just searched for a wide variety of things. Uh, cute animals, vacation destinations, seasons, um, vehicles. I searched for toys. I searched for food. And so you'll see here kind of the results of those searches. And I just pulled a whole bunch of images together that were appropriate for the group of people I was working with. And to start our time together, rather than just driving right into the learning targets or, you know, we're here to learn today, I started out with this relationship building piece and the instructions were simple check out the images and choose one that speaks to you or that you like or that you want to know something else about any image. So there wasn't a requirement here that you know, students had to remember content or know things right away. We're just simply picking something we like. And then I started the sharing by saying, you know, the image that really stands out to me is that group of balloons. It reminds me of a movie I watched a long time ago where, you know, a boy and a, an older gentleman tied balloons to a house and it flew away. And I think that would be so cool if we could, you know, just tie a group of balloons and, and pop up in the air. That would be awesome. What spoke to you? And people chose all different images and just kind of described what they liked about those images. You can switch this up as often as you like, but the encouragement here is to always start with a relationship building piece, something that's a non-stressful way that allows students to share um, in that safe classroom environment. It's a consistent structure that we can do quickly. If we don't want to share as a whole group, you know, students could turn and talk to a partner or talk to their group. Um, you know, they could you know, hold up a picture of the image they like, a whole variety of ways to do that. Um, but we want to do it consistently so that we're building those relationships and digging deep into our students and their likes. 
throughout these slides that I'm sharing with you, I've pulled a whole bunch of images that really resonated with me over the past three months. And I love this recommendation from Wholehearted School Counseling that she shared on Instagram, talking about trauma-sensitive classrooms. So rather than asking students about what they did over the summer or trick-or-treating, any kind of holiday or occasion for which a student might not have the same experience or a positive experience to report. You know, what did you do over winter break? Well, you know, one student might have gotten all the toys in the world and another student might have gotten nothing, right? So we don't want to focus on those occasions that are going to cause divides, but rather pull students in together. So things like, you know, what do you love learning about? What's your favorite thing to look at? What do you look forward to? What are three awesome things about yourself? What's one thing you'd like to know about your teacher or your classmates? Or what's one thing that you would like them to know about you? So some ways to build relationships with students. Before we can build deeply into our students and building relationships, I wanted to share just a quick reminder that we need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves first. And Elena Aguilar has written a fantastic book called Onward that if you haven't gotten a chance to read yet, I would highly encourage you to check it out. It talks all about building resilience. And so that she's also shared a great resource that has lots and lots of different tools we can use. And one free resource that she shared is this energy check-in. Um, we went ahead and uploaded it into our uh, Google Drive at NKCES and turned it into a fillable PDF. And the energy check-in is just a great tool I use. Um, they suggest every few months. I actually look at it every weekend. And just take a moment <laughs> to take care of myself, to you know, think about um, what I'm doing for myself. Am I getting enough rest? And am I eating nutritiously? And am I really taking time to you know, think and um, exercise and do all those things that we need to do for ourselves? I don't ever use this to chastise myself for, oh my word, Laura, you didn't exercise enough this week. What I do is I highlight one area every weekend that I'm like, ah, oh, nutritious breakfast. I, I should really focus on that. Yeah, I missed a bunch of breakfasts and I know I want to focus on that. So I'm going to focus on getting a nutritious breakfast every day as much as possible. And then I make a quick plan for that. So, all right. So the quickest thing I can think of is, you know, that I want to have, you know, instant oatmeal. I'm going to grab five packs. I'm going to organize them in my lunchbox. I get myself set just one target. I don't try and do it all. And I don't do the same thing every week, but I do take the moment on a weekend to just think about what I can do to make myself healthy so that I can take care of my family and uh, take care of my students everywhere I go. So hopefully this energy check-in is something that might be useful to you and a way to reflect and just focus on you. There are so many great groups out there right now. And I tell you at this point um, with the pandemic and with COVID, I do not have a lot of emotional energy to read books or you know, watch really long podcasts or listen to long podcasts, watch long videos. What I do try and take time for at least, you know, once every three days is I pop into my Instagram account and on my Instagram account, I've really carefully um, chosen who to follow. So I follow people that are really working deeply in the anti-racism movement. And I follow people who are really focusing on social emotional learning for adults and students. That's mainly what I'm doing. And so I go there and just refill my own personal battery. And I save images that are meaningful to me, and you'll see them throughout this presentation. And then in Facebook, um, I have focused on following some really specific groups. So I really enjoy Bitmoji Classrooms. I follow a bunch of teachers that are doing ed tech, and I follow a bunch of people that are doing social emotional learning. I'm in a bunch of groups, and so once or twice a week, I go into my groups, and I just kind of cull through to find some key learning. So one group you might want to consider following is the Hannigan group. They've got this equity in school discipline group, and they share lots of things that I've found to be very helpful, including this check your battery um, image that I think would be a good thing to be able to share with students you know, once a week. 
I also love um, at Holistically Grace. She's got some excellent resources and I really like this personal boundaries resource. I liked it for myself, um, but I also like it as a teaching moment with our students to really dig into what we value what it's not okay for other people to do, like criticize us, and what we have rights to do, and how to do that in a safe space. One of my all-time favorite sites has always been Teaching Tolerance, and they have um, really thought through their mission and changed their name. So their new name is called Learning for Justice, and they continue to just share fantastic resources. They've done a lot of great new supports to help us understand what it means to be anti-racist and what it means to really support our students who are Black, our students of color, our students from um, all different backgrounds and socioeconomic um, areas. I am really interested in uh, being a voice for changing our curriculum, making sure that we're thinking intentionally through the classroom texts that we teach, because we can do a lot of social emotional damage to students when we are not representing them in the curriculum we're teaching and when we're teaching um, just quite frankly incorrect content that's been around forever, but we know better now. And as Maya Angelou says, once you know better, do better. So, you know, how can we really start diving into the curriculum and how do we know what curriculums need to be changed? So Learning for Justice is doing a great job at that. They have a magazine I would encourage you to subscribe to. It's free and has great resources. And I follow them on Twitter. Um, They share out their latest and greatest articles, and that's always a great way to get a quick summary. Throughout the training, I'm going to share three keywords, and you will need those three keywords at the very end if you would like to earn the PD and ELA credit. So just jot down learning for justice. That is the key word, actually key phrase for the first multiple choice question that you will need to earn that PD and ELA credit. All right, so I mentioned that I love Twitter, and so uh, Learning for Justice shared a new resource. I have not gotten to dive as deeply into it as I would like to, um, but Western State Center is offering a train the trainer on confronting white nationalism in schools, and it looks like they are getting ready to throw out some new resources, including a toolkit. So I know that some of you who are interested in really supporting our students, um, that might be a great resource. Uh, Social Emotional Learning Day is coming up, and I know that many of you will want to check out the resources. So (coughs) you can go to selday.org and sign up to get more information um, about Social Emotional Learning Day. Castle has excellent resources. And I know most of us use Castle resources for social emotional learning um, to support students. If you have not downloaded their Reunite, Renew, and Thrive resource, it is hyperlinked with a whole host of great resources. And over on the left, one of the action steps that I would encourage you to check out and the hyperlinks that they have is this one that says refocus on adult connections, self-care, competencies, and capacities. And so really as adults, taking that time and opportunity where we are taking care of each other and setting that school-wide culture to support each other and to make sure we've got culturally responsive practices. Excellent resources hyperlinked into this action step. And the tool itself is hyperlinked there at the bottom of that slide in the orange bar. KDE has produce some excellent resources over the summer and they continue to roll them out. But if you haven't gotten a chance to watch um, the webinar on supporting preschool students, um, that's an excellent video. I've hyperlinked it in here for you. I've also hyperlinked to the trauma-informed teams guide and resource and the guide and resource for what is a trauma-informed school. And there's just excellent quick tips in those resources that you might want to check out. This trauma-sensitive school checklist, I think, is a great place to start. So if, as we're going through all these resources, you're like, man, Laura, you've 
they're throwing a lot of stuff at me. I, I'm kind of paralyzed now. I don't know what to do. I would highlight star and underline um, this slide as a great first place to start. The trauma sensitive school checklist um, is ideally designed to be reviewed as a school team. So you can review it in your second grade PLN, um, in your you know, high school um, social studies group. You can do this as a whole school. Um, you can do this with just a, a smaller team. But using this as a reflective tool to change practice is fantastic. So you'll notice on the left that they've got these elements the checklist itself is in five components, but you're looking at the four elements. Uh, either one, it's not in place at all. Two, partially in place. Three, mostly. And four, you know, we fully have this under control. I've hyperlinked to the resource there on the right. And then I went ahead and took screenshots so we could just chat briefly about it. So the very first um, section criteria is focusing on that safe and respectful environment. And I just like the elements that are quick and easy to read and then check. So for example, number one, which is so powerful, the school contains predictable and safe environments. And I would encourage you when you're using this tool, really unpack that um, because they're saying, you know, predictable and safe environment includes classrooms, hallways, playgrounds, and the school bus. I would break those down and kind of talk through what those look like. Um, it is great to get parent and student input on this also. So if you as a team are like, yeah, we're at a four, um, but you pull together a parent team and talk about it and the parents are like, I have no idea what those policies are. I don't see them anywhere. You know, then we need to kind of rethink where we are, but excellent tool. So we start with school-wide policies and practices, and then you're gonna look at classroom strategies and techniques, collaborations and linkages with mental health, family partnerships and community linkages. Great tool um, this could be a tool that you do at the beginning, middle, and end of the year um, to really continue refining your practice. And just like with the energy check-in, I would encourage you to choose one element that you're going to really target and then try and change the needle uh, for a positive response in your building. I try in these sessions to really provide resources from elementary through high school. So um, one that's perfect for secondary is this free trauma yoga toolkit. Just a few reminders when you're doing any mindfulness or yoga activities with students to be trauma sensitive and mindful. It's very important that we always invite students to participate. It should never be mandatory, never be required, but an opportunity to engage and we should also never force students to close their eyes or assume poses because closing eyes and certain poses can be triggers for students and do the exact opposite of what you are intending to do. So make it an invitation and um, make it something that students feel safe to um, watch or observe but not participate. If you still have students that are self-isolating, you know, the families not, um, students aren't in the building right now, or family members are isolating, um, there are some great suggestions for ways that you can provide supports. And so I thought I'd just share that visual with you. I mentioned earlier, I love some Bitmoji classrooms, and this one um, is an SEL wonderland. I've hyperlinked it in there for you. There are some great sensory ideas, some ways to just support and explore SEL. There are some great movement activities, so great ideas. Uh, we've already looked at some at Holistically Grace resource. Um, these are some more fantastic ones that you um, could either use for instruction or modify for students. I love this concept of supporting students and understanding, you know, what are my needs and what am I seeking? You know, I'm feeling a little out of balance. Am I seeking connection? Do I need a distraction for a few minutes? Do I just need some meaning for what are we doing? Why is this happening? Do I need something physical? Do we need to move? Do I need some water? Do I just need a break, you know, that relief? Or do I need some autonomy? I need to feel a little power and control because right now my life is out of control. All of these elements to me um, are what I call ready to learn, right? We want our students to be ready to learn. And if they're not, then you know, I can have the best lesson in the world, but I'm really just talking to myself at this point because they weren't ready to receive the content. 
So we want students to understand that idea of being ready to learn. And if I'm not ready to learn, what do I need? <clears throat> On the right, we also have those self-soothing ideas during times of uncertainty. You might want to use this as is. Um, for students, I would recommend uh, modifying that, especially the bottom one where students might not quite understand or, you know, at school we really can't take a hot or cold shower and it's really not appropriate to get a massage. So we might just use the bottom three choices, you know, squeeze a stress ball, explore some different textures. We might make some other choices there. But I do like the idea of if I'm feeling stressed, you know, here are some things I can do with my eyes, my nose, my mouth, my ears, and my hands to help me feel a little bit more balanced. So a great starting point. Keyword number two is wholehearted school counseling. Uh, that is one of my favorite, favorite resources with that Holistically Grace. Great ideas there. So check wholehearted school counseling for key phrase number two. So I have mentioned already that you know, when we're supporting students' social emotional learning, no matter which students are sitting in front of us, and what color their skin is, it is really important that students understand the concept of anti-racism and that we would support students no matter, you know, what color their skin. Yeah, I want to, if I have a classroom full of students, whether my students, you know, identify as a black student, a student from an indigenous background, a student that, um, has any any skin color, whether they identify across the LGBTQIA spectrum, I want students to be comfortable. So this, um, this I'm sorry, I lost my language there, this Facebook message from a friend um, that they shared from another friend I thought was fantastic. A decade ago, we talked a lot about, you know, not seeing color, right? We're colorblind, right? And we know now, we know better. We know that that is not appropriate and that we want to see people as they are. So I love this quote. I see no color is not the goal. Our goal is this. And I am working really hard to memorize this phrase because I think this is beautiful. I see your color and I honor you. I value your input and I want to be educated about your lived experiences. If you haven't um, had a chance to dive deeply into the world of culture responsive teaching and anti-racism, I would highlight that phrase lived experiences because a lot of what we should be doing in our instruction and for all students is really listening to students' lived experiences, especially our students who are black, students who are brown, students with an indigenous background. I will work against the racism that harms you. You are beautiful and I will do better. And that's our goal. I have this framed now um, and I reflect on it every day. Yeah, you know, really, that is my, my ultimate goal. I am interspersing in, and I hope you, you're, you say, wow, Laura, you're kind of bouncing back and forth here. And I'm doing that intentionally um, because, you know, we really, it's easy for us to lose focus on taking care of ourselves. And I want to just layer in lots of resources for us. So just every few resources, we're going to have something else for us. And this resource is Take 5 for Teachers, um, some fantastic quick suggestions. If you only have one minute, if you have five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or an hour, they've broken down all kinds of different resources um, to help us support our mental health. I love this concept here of decision fatigue. You know, if we don't take a break pretty often, then we start zapping our brain power. Um, through the holidays, my family and I all um, experienced COVID, and um, we definitely feel like we're still recovering from that experience and feeling a lot of brain fatigue just from that experience. Um, quarantining you know, is a fatiguing experience, and then definitely all of the political and social crises that have happened across our nation cause a lot of brain fatigue. So Take 5 is a great concept and excellent resources. I also found a lot of things in the list that I could use to teach students. So I hope you dive into that resource. Wholehearted School Counseling has shared this fantastic quick resources for if our students are feeling a certain way, what can they do to really relieve that stress? So another quick and fun resource. 
if you are looking for new lessons, collaborative learning selection solutions has a host of SEL lessons that you can check out. Some of my favorite quick resources um, are shared by Wholehearted School Counseling, and she has a Teachers Pay Teachers site, and you can sort that to pull all the free resources. She um, also has resources that you can pay for that include social emotional learning check ins, reminders for managing bad days, and ways to challenge negative thoughts. So, just some great resources. I also recently came across this resource from the Department of Education in Maine called the SEL for Me. When you go in, um, you it kind of starts you walking through a process and it looks like it's only for people in Maine, but it let me put in my NKCES email and continue through to their resources. So I'm pretty sure you can do the same with your school email. And like I said, excellent social emotional learning resources for you to check out. Social emotional wellness is also on the news to you website, and they have started sharing out some free resources um, that you can use to support students. And they really focus on those evidence based interventions. I Check, found this strategy that Edutopia shared on Instagram, and it's called Ask the Question Twice. And this is a, a trust building activity that we can do for our students. And you'll want to teach the strategy first. So you want to let students know, I'm always going to ask the question twice. So the first one is hands up or thumbs up if you think you know the answer and then tell everyone hands down. And then the next part is um, hands up if you'd like to tell me the answer. I would encourage you to modify this strategy because we know that it is a less effective way to teach to have students answer one at a time. I would definitely do the first. Hands up if you think you know the answer. That's excellent. All right, so what I'd like you to do is with your thinking partner or however you term your think pair share, but I would have students consistently share your thoughts with a partner, share your thoughts with your group, and hopefully that's a group of four, and then um, call on a few different groups to share their thinking. But definitely um, giving students the opportunity at first just to say, you know, hands up if you think you know the answer. I also preface this with this statement. Okay, so I'd like to just get a feel for how well I taught this first part of the lesson. So hands up if you think you know the answer and I've conveyed that information correctly. That really takes the pressure off of many students because the onus is on me, the teacher. And they think, well, man, she, she really didn't teach that very well. I don't know it, right? Um, as opposed to, oh no, I didn't get it, right? Because sometimes it's not a kid fail. Sometimes it was a me fail. And so I wanna know if you know 50% of the students are like, yep, I don't got it. I don't know what you're doing. Then I know I need to go back and reteach. All right, another great resource for us. I like the idea of taking these self-care activities, breaking those up into um, visual posters that we scatter throughout our room so that when kids are feeling stressed, they know that they can, they have several different places they can look in their room to think of an activity that you as a teacher are saying, these are okay things to do when you're stressed. This is exactly what is okay. These ideas are for us as adults, again, <laughs> build into yourself. I will tell you though, physical self-care, try a green smoothie. Somebody's going to have to really make those better for me, but I will definitely get myself a Starbucks and it's going to be delicious. I might even get it with coconut milk and I'm going to feel like really healthy about that. So I would encourage you, I have taken a lot of these kinds of lists and personalized it for me because, you know, call a friend, yeah, I'm not so great at that, but uh, text a friend a message, I'm in. So I need to tweak these a little bit, spend time with the pet. You know, we're a pet-free house, everybody has allergies. Um, so I'm going to choose a different activity for myself. Some of you are going to spend time with all your pets and be oh so happy. So modify this for you, but I would definitely encourage you to um, think through things that make you happy and things that can make your students happy. So a large part of social emotional learning 
um, and supporting students of all races and backgrounds is focusing on these two newer concepts to me. Um, one is restorative justice, and restorative justice has been around for a long time, but I'm seeing a lot of um, re-energizing around the concept of restorative justice. I loved this visual because it breaks it down into tier one, tier two, and tier three. If you haven't had a chance to dive into restorative justice, please shoot me an email and I can share with you some of my favorite really quick resources that I've been looking at. Another concept that is really big in the world of culturally responsive teaching is this concept of decentering the teacher and really centering on students' lived experiences. So I've given you a link to that website and Decenter the Teacher does a lot on Instagram and as reposted a lot on Facebook, um, if you start following those groups um, to get some really good, quick information. I love the idea of working with students to create a positive personal mantra. And the counseling teacher had a great suggestion for a way to do that. Um, if I was still in the classroom, I would definitely be doing this with my students and have them keep that in their digital or live um, notebook or journal. Another great resource from Wholehearted School Counseling um, with coping thoughts. You know, we know a lot of students really struggle with that internal negative self-talk where when anything goes wrong, you know, everything is wrong. So helping them build that growth mindset with some coping thoughts might be a successful strategy for them. If you want to deepen your understanding of what is happening in the new research and new work that is happening in anti-racism, um, Diversify Your Narrative is a great person to follow. And I am also really focusing on um, groups that talk a lot about inclusivity. So I love this visual ways to be more inclusive and some steps that we can take. Number three, I thought was really fantastic. Yeah, and I find myself doing this a lot when you're talking to a group of students, a group of adults, you're saying things like, hey, ladies, okay, guys, let's get it together, right? But trying to avoid that gender specific language and making sure that we're really focusing on language that includes everyone. If you take one thing out of this training specific to modifying your curriculum that really is in line with the earlier resources we talked about, I love this resource from Teach for the Culture. And again, I have turned this into a checklist that we could use with every lesson we take. So for every lesson I'm going to teach, I want to ask myself, whose stories are being told today? You know, when I pick up the Wonders textbook, whose story is being told? Who is the narrator of these stories? Whose perspective is being centered? And if we're decentering the teacher, then hopefully it's not my perspective, it's the students. Whose voices are being left out? Which identities are being portrayed as the heroes? Ask myself those questions every time. I'm really focusing, you know, to me that's four or five quick questions I can ask myself easily before the lesson and make some adjustments to the lesson. I am also working with the students that I work with to ask themselves these questions and ask me those questions so that if we go through a story, they can say to me, wow, let's talk about whose story was being told there. Like my voice wasn't included and make sure that we're uh, giving students that empowerment. Conscious discipline, many of us have been through trainings if you work in younger grades, but conscious discipline really has great principles and concepts for supporting students at all ages, including middle school and high school. And they are doing great work, I think, on Instagram, sharing excellent short videos and quick posts. So if you haven't checked in with them lately, I would encourage you, um, if you're on Instagram, to look for them and then check out some of their quick resources. As a reminder, those of you who have been in trainings with me before know that I am not a fan of behavior charts that are visual in the classroom. You know, those are um, really not good practice when we think about social emotional learning and supporting all students. They violate student privacy and they really um, have us a lot of times focusing on the negative. And even when you're focusing on the positive, the 
um, opposite of that is kids still see who you're not who you're not clipping up, right? So I would encourage you to definitely follow ASCD's recommendations. Tear down the behavior charts if you want to keep that kind of record. Doing that privately in a folder, in a binder, in a digital way is appropriate. And um, one thing I would encourage you to ask each other, ask yourself is, would I be comfortable with adults doing this to me? So that, you know, when I make a mess, misstep and I say, all right, hey guys, and you know, my principal walks by and he's like, nope, 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 that was gender specific language. Clip yourself down, Mrs. Clark. Not okay. Right. I, I would not tolerate that well. I would be horrified. So I'm not going to do it to students. I love uh, visual images to just take times to reflect. And this image I like for this reason. A lot of times when we're supporting students, um, I am always in a hurry up and go mode. And I realize that my steps are too big. I'm expecting students to move too quickly. And if you look at this visual of these really short steps, I try and keep this image in my mind when I'm requesting students do something right now, right now, right now, turn to page 57, get out your books and you need your writing notebook, a red pen, a blue pen, a pencil. Don't forget your highlighter, get your computer out. We're going to be on, we're going to be on edgenuity. You need to be opening up social studies. I'm giving so many instructions. I'm expecting kids to leap from step one to 12. So really pausing, providing visual prompts. If I ask kids to get out a pen, I hold up a pen. If I ask them to open Edgenuity, I pause and I open Edgenuity. If I want them to go to social studies, I pause and open that up <clears throat> so that students see the visual and I'm giving those small steps. We definitely know that some recommended practice for students is providing that trauma sensitive, mindful activities and giving students the chance to reflect on their comfort throughout the day. If you would like to dive into trauma-sensitive mindfulness, um, UK's Center on Trauma and Children shared some fantastic resources through their Project AWARE grant. Oops, and one of those was a mindfulness um, presentation. I actually took some of the concepts that they shared and um, created a separate presentation, and you'll have a link for that in your slides as an added bonus. I also scripted that presentation out so that if you wanted to share it with students, you could see the script that I use and then modify that for yourself. And I've designed it so that I'm sharing my slides with you. And if you want to take it and modify it, you can just make a copy for yourself. So look for that in your training guide. If you are looking for some mindful breathing supports for your students, whether you're looking at the elementary on the left, or if you're looking on the right, I've used this with middle school and high school students. There are some great ways you can teach that mindfulness and provide those for students. So rather than students really stressing in class, um, I let students take a break. And then when they get out a breathing board and start you know, really um, going through that figure eight, then I know I'm giving them a few minutes. And usually that's a sign to me that I probably need to slow down and think about what I just asked students to do. I also uh, think, given all that I'm reading right now, that offering students mindfulness check-ins throughout our lesson um, is a great way to help students recenter. So you can use a standard visual every time and just remind kids, hey, it's time for a mindfulness check-in on a scale of one to 10. How are you feeling right now? You can have them recorded on a whiteboard, on a post-it note, you know, use, the, use their hands, but to show you where they are. You know, one or two word check-in, how are you doing right now? but just reminding students to check in with themselves. If you haven't um, or would like to see what a morning meeting looks like with that social emotional learning focus, um, there is a fantastic video that a school shared out. And I wanted to share that with you just as a kind of live example of this is what this can look like. And you can watch that video right in the slides. Um, remember that five, for three, two, one grounding is super important for our students. You know, saying five things you can see, think about four things that you could feel. What are three things that you hear right now? What are two things that you smell? And what is one thing that you could taste? 
to reground themselves. I have a lot more resources and some of these were shared out during our training. So I've hyperlinked in. If you want bonus resources, then dive into any and all of these. There are great videos and links to all kinds of fun activities. Which brings us to our last keyword, take five, because we always should take five for ourselves. In the training guide, you will have two additional resources. One is to the mindfulness presentation. One is to a bonus set of slides to use with students. I hope you enjoyed our learning today. And please reach out to me if you have any questions at all. I'm always happy to chat and look at resources together.